Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Walter. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Today's video is going to be about replacing the brake cable, sometimes called the control cable, on your lawnmower. Uh, oftentimes, they get rusted, broken, uh, uh, and other defects to them, which make your mower either impossible to start or intermittent sometimes. Um, this is a pretty straightforward job, but I'm going to show you a couple of gotchas in there that you want to be mindful of when you're trying to replace your cable. Follow along. Okay, the problem with this mower uh, is obviously, uh, or very obvious, this cable has some uh, rust and deterioration there. It broke somewhere in the middle because you can see it's still actually connected um, on the mower itself. Uh, the good thing here is this one still actually has a part number that you can read uh, on here. It's kind of hard if the camera will focus. Um, part number there. Uh, for this demonstration, the part number really doesn't matter because there are so many different kinds out there um, that you really don't want to get the wrong one. The best way to make sure you're getting the right one is to always check on various parts websites um, to make sure you know the model number. Don't Not the serial number, but the model number of your mower to get the right part. Now, once you determine which cable you're going to buy, you want to double check and make sure that the ends are correct. This particular mower has this little uh, hooked end thing on there. Uh, other mowers have these little clips that just sort of clip in. Uh, and you want to make sure that is firmly attached on your mower because uh, this one went wrong because the peg that holds it into the uh, handlebar broke off. So there was nothing really wrong with the cable. Uh, it was the. Um, the mounting bracket that messed this one up. But generally speaking, uh, most of these are all going to have, uh, you know, a particular end that uh, matches. The one that goes to the mower is always the same one. So the one on the handlebar uh, is going to be kind of different. And make sure you get the right one uh, or matches your type of mower. Okay, so in order to replace the cable, you're going to have to loosen it at one end or the other. This one is real easy. It has a little L-shaped bracket that pops out of there. Uh, if this cable was not broken, there would be a lot of tension here. And oftentimes the easiest way to relieve that tension is to press in on the bale. It will pop out and then you can swing it around and give you all the clearance in the world that you need. I'm going to leave that disconnected uh, because it'll make installing the new one easier. Uh, so in order to remove uh, the cable from the handlebars, uh, you're going to need to get some clearance there. Oftentimes they put these wire tie things on here. You are going to have to cut that and replace that to get enough clearance for that cable to uh, spin out of there. So that's what we'll be doing here. So get this thing to turn. There we go. So that just pops out there. All right. And then the next thing is to loosen it from the bottom side. Okay, now you're going to need to remove the cable from the motor end, and I removed the shroud off of this mower just for easier access for the camera. It's not really necessary uh, on all mowers, but it just made it easier on this one. Uh, and hopefully you'll have the clearance to pull this, um, because again, it's another L-shaped bracket that you're going to have to pull out straight and make that turn. And remember how this one goes in from the bottom and then straightens out. Most of them are all the same. The next thing is you can see that there's little wings on this plastic mounting piece. A pair of needle nose pliers is really helpful to get in there and compress those little wings enough to get it to pop out of this hole. There's the little wings that you compress, all right, and it'll go through that hole. So outside of a complete cable failure, broken cable, or a, say the broken uh, connecting tab we talked about, there's a couple other areas that you want to look for in case your mower is in, not wanting to start sometimes. Uh, you want to look at this end right here. If you can see those wires sticking out there, um, that the two smaller wires, here's another example, not, not quite as bad. 
uh, as the first one there. But really what's happening here are these two other wires are part of the structure that holds the whole outer cable assembly together. And once those wires start popping out, um, the outer cable actually can shrink. And when the outer cable gets smaller, then the inner cable gets longer. And then there's not enough tension to be able to open up that uh, switch on the bottom of the mower. So that's a common problem that's hard to diagnose sometimes, especially when it starts sometimes and doesn't start at other times. Okay, so here's our new one. We're gonna have to tear into that. And oftentimes, it's been in the bag so long, um, you need to actually work on sort of straightening the cable out a little bit to get that sort of permanent bend out of there. You want it as straight as possible before we try to install it on the mower. All right, that looks pretty straight right there. All right, so we're gonna start uh, again on the motor end to make it a little bit easier. Um, and the other thing that you can do too is, um, is if you're in a less than ideal uh, storage environment, like outdoors under a tarp or in a leaky shed, um, you uh, can always put a couple of drops of motor oil in there and work the cable in and out. Don't do grease that can freeze up in the winter, um, which would be kind of difficult to undo. But remember how the little tab came out, okay? Uh, and that was, uh, this goes in from the bottom. So we're, we're going to um, hook in our cable first. And try not to use pliers here because it is easy to break that guy off, which we don't want to do. And then we're going to put the cable through there and then just push the cable on with the little, so the little wing tabs lock in there. All right, and the next thing uh, is to be sure and route the cable on the underside if your mower has um, a handle that you can bend over. The reason is, is this typically goes over this way. And that'll make for a much more gentle bend in there. This piece right here, I have to turn it almost completely sideways on this particular style to get it to go in and turn. There we go. Pop that guy in there. All right. And then have a couple of cable ties at the ready. I always put one near the bottom so that it doesn't get snagged. Uh, in limbs and trees and that sort of thing. And then the other place I like to put a cable tie, especially on these guys like this, is uh, right there. There's a lot of tension on that when you put that together. Okay, and the last thing uh, we're going to do is to hook this onto the bale end. And since we still have the bale disconnected, it's going to be really easy. And again, it goes on the inside of the handle. Don't try to push it. It'll get twisted up on that side. But plenty of clearance. Tighten that back on there. Open the bale up. And let that hole slide back in. And I think, yeah, man, that feels good. All right, so I've cleaned up a lot of this dust and dirt that was on here so you can get a better idea of really what this mechanism is doing. That little wire right there attached to this bracket uh, is actually going under the engine and to the coil. And uh, the other half where it's touching right now is uh, what is the movement that uh, when you operate the bail handle, you see that becomes completely disengaged. And incidentally, there's a little brake pad right there that holds the flywheel. That's why it's so difficult to start if you don't engage the handle. Um, and you can see if the cable is stretched or not quite together, if you don't operate it completely, it still might be touching just a little bit there. And that's why your mower might be intermittent or sometimes it starts and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but there you go. That's how all that works.
So there you have it. Hopefully that's a few helpful tips and pointers uh, if you want to replace your zone cable, control cable, brake cable, whatever they call it there. If you learned something, please push the like and subscribe button and I can make more of these videos. Remember, I'm the lawnmower lady and as I'm real fond of saying, mo happy. Thanks for watching.